In this week's video, we're gonna finish off what's involved in the end of line testing for the Haldex valve. So let's get into this. I'm doing the lot today, every test I can do. With the old ECU files copied over in last week's video, the ECU can now learn the various inputs and we can check that they are correct along the way. This is the sensor test. To perform this test, we need to jack up the appropriate axle to allow us to rotate the wheels while the trailer is stationary. I suppose you could just drive it around the yard. This trailer has two wheel speed sensors fitted, S1A which is the near side and S1B which is the off side. We need to rotate the wheels through three revolutions in five seconds for the ECU to acknowledge the sensor is working correctly before it moves on to the next sensor. Get spinning. After the ECU has tested all available sensors, it will produce a pass or failed result. That's it mate, that's all right now. Okay. We can now move on to the sensor modulator test. This test programs the corresponding wheel speed output to the correct modulator. We need to rotate the wheels at one revolution in two seconds. When the moving wheel is successfully braked, the program will move on to the next wheel speed sensor. The push through test is where the system pressures will be measured. With the park brake released, we can apply the foot brake and measure the delivery pressures on port 1 and the output pressures on port 21 and port 22. Right, go and press the brake pedal. Release the foot brake! Take your foot off! All right! The EBS pressure function test forces the system to simulate various load calculations and control pressures. The delivery pressure will be measured and compared to the target pressures. The pressure will increase and be held as the test goes on till it to pass. In the lamp and auxiliary test, the cab light and any wired in auxiliaries such as a colas valve will be checked for functionality. They'll be forced on, then off and monitored for correct response. The leak control test consists of removing the red line and applying the foot brake for a selectable period of 60 or 120 seconds. You can input an acceptable pressure loss value for this check before continuing. During this time period the valve checks the reservoir pressures for reference and counts down. At the end of this period all the pressures are compared and if the value displayed hasn't dropped below the permitted limit the system will pass the evaluation and move on to the next stage.
The last stage is brake compatibility, which, if I'm honest, I haven't got a clue about or what I'm actually going to do during this test. So, if you do know, please drop it in the comments below and I'll know for future reference. All I know is it passes. With the compatibility test finished and all the end of line tests done, we're presented with a pass certificate. I can present this to the customer to say his valve has been through the whole verification process. As you can see, the information in the certificate includes data copied over from the old valve, such as the brake calculation, pole wheel and manufacture data. This has saved me time and effort and is why JAL test is a brilliant diagnostic tool for doing this job. The next thing for this trailer is a trip up the road to ensure the lateral stability function is correct and we don't have any brake pressure issues before returning it to the customer.